Hey, good to see ya. It's another Friday, week two of lockdown, almost done. Now, it seems that lockdown may be continuing slightly more than what we expected. And so I thought, let's, why not continue a series, which I started with uh, the primary kids. And we were looking at, during primary assembly, looking at Jesus and how important he is and certain aspects of his character. And so I thought we could do that uh, this time each week. And so today, we're going to be looking at something uh, very individual that's quite specific to Jesus. And that is Jesus the Christ. So we're going to start off with a Bible passage from Matthew chapter 1 verse 22. Let me read that out. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Okay, so there were two important words I wanted to look at in that little passage. The first one is fulfill and the second one is prophet. We're going to look at both of those now. Firstly, a prophet. A prophet in the Old Testament is someone that God chose to speak on his behalf and to guide his people, Israel. And fulfill is just a word that means when a prophet says something will happen and it happens. So when God speaks through a prophet in the Old Testament, what they say will happen, happens. It gets fulfilled. But there were also false prophets who claimed that God had told them that something would happen. But the people could tell they were false prophets because what they said would happen didn't happen. It wasn't fulfilled. For example, there will be chocolate. There will be chocolate. Now, of course, real prophets didn't do silly tricks like that. No, they said and did important things. And remember that when God spoke through his prophets, what they said would happen, happened. Always. Most of the time, prophets were telling God's people that they needed to repent. Now, if you're in primary, you might remember this, but repent just means to turn away from sin and turn back to God. And that if they didn't repent, they'd be punished. But there is one thing that's promised and prophesied all through the Old Testament. And that is the coming of God's chosen rescuer to save his people. And that person was known by the Israelites, the Jewish people, as the Messiah. Now, you may have heard that word. And if you haven't, you've definitely heard the Greek version of that word, which is Christ. Hmm. And there are lots of these prophecies in the Old Testament. For example, when God speaks to King David in a dream in 2 Samuel 7, he says this. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. Or the prophet Micah, who says, Bethlehem Ephrath, you are one of the smallest towns in the name of nation of Judah. But the Lord will choose one of your people to rule the nation. Someone whose family goes back to ancient times. And Isaiah the prophet says, The blind will see, and the ears of the deaf will be healed. Those who were lame will leap around like deer. Tongues once silent will begin to shout. So, who do you think they were talking about? Who was God promising that he would send? Who is the fulfillment of all those prophecies? That's right. It's one, two, three. Jesus! E. And that was just a few of the prophecies. In fact, some people who love the Bible and who love maths e. E. have discovered that there are more than 300 prophecies in the Old Testament written specifically about Jesus. And they were written hundreds, if not thousands of years before he was even born. So then... Let's hear what Jesus himself has to say about all these prophecies. Matthew 13 verses 16 and 17 say this, But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. You see, Jesus knows that he is a fulfillment of all these prophecies. 
He is God's chosen king. He is the ultimate priest. He is the greatest of all God's prophets. But of course, that's not all, because he's also God's son. And he's God's chosen and promised savior of the world. You see, friends, when Jesus died on that cross, he rescued all of humanity by taking our sin and dying so we don't have to. It was the most important moment in all of history. E. E. In fact, you might also know that when Jesus died, the Bible says that he even died for God's chosen people in the Old Testament too. So I want you to think about how blessed we are to be this side of Jesus. Because lots and lots of men and women knew that God was going to do something amazing and they were looking forward to it. But they died before they could see him or hear about him or know him like we can right now. He is the Christ. He is God's promised Messiah, the Savior of the world. There is none like him. And so we need to repent. We need to turn away from our sin and turn back to him and be forgiven. And then just follow him. Let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you have spoken through your prophets over thousands of years about Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that we live now on the other side of Jesus and we know we can be forgiven. We know how you chose to save the world. Help us to live for him, to turn away from our sin and follow him every day. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, another dad joke here. In fact, this joke doesn't come from a book. It comes from an actual dad, my father-in-law, Tony. Hey. He's also Mr. Shady's dad. Hey. And this is his joke. Day seven of social distancing. I struck up a conversation with a spider today. Seems nice. He's a web designer. I'm out. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.